What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews and the third part in my 10 part series of reviews for the Knott's 100 year anniversary. So for this particular review I'm going to share my top 10 places to get refreshments, food, and generally just places to eat while you're in the park. So this is of course not going to include um, the Knott's chicken dinner restaurant that's out in the marketplace or anything along the marketplace. This is an, a generally all-in park experience so you don't actually have to leave the park and come back or worry about where to go once you leave the park before you get to the park or anything like that. Um, this is of course and this is also not going to include a couple of places in Ghost Town um, just because they're not necessarily bad places but just places that never really make our list but they are good alternatives to places that I am going to recommend. Um, this also does not include Fiesta Village because it is under redesign as of this video so um, depending on I think they're going to reopen basically what we saw before but just part with a new ex visual experience but if they change stuff and thing like things like that I, don't, I kind of want to leave that review till when the Fiesta Village actually reopens. So with that being said, first up on my list is not necessarily a breakfast item or a morning thing, but um, I'm trying to make it a point now, at least once you're of drinking age, to head to this Calico Saloon for um, just, they have a, also a variety of, you know, wines and beers and um, hard liquor and things like that, but they also are good about keeping up with the current theming of whatever festival and events are going on, so... As of this video, we still ha or we have the extended version of the Boysenberry Festival, so they still have their Boysenberry mojito, um, a, a mule kind of drink, and things like that. Um, on this last visit, there were not any shows going on that I could tell, but if there's a show, then you can have you know drinks and a show going on. So a good all-encompassing saloon experience, but it's always on my list now just because they have. It's a good place to relax, especially in summer when it's really hot and you want to get something to drink. In winter it's not necessarily a bad place because it's cold and you're inside, but you know, it's more worth it when you want, when it is, you know, hot outside and you want to break in the shade. Um, while we're in Ghost Town, there is also Fireman's Barbecue. So if you want, you know, a turkey or chicken leg and drinks and fries and things like that, it is a good place to get some food. It's generally consistent with the flavor as far as I can tell. Um, it's not necessarily that I might, you know, I have the best taste in food, but when it does make the list of places to stop and eat at, then it's very handy, especially if you're spending enough time in um, the ghost town area. Um, in this area as well, or once you go past the ghost town area and you start heading into the Roaring Twenties boardwalk area, then the new, new newly redesigned newly redesigned Prop Shop Pizzeria is a good place to go. Um, it's new on my list of favorite places to eat just because the uh, two or three times that I've gone there so far it's been really good to or their food has been really good so uh, the first time I think I got their veggie pizza and it was good. The second time around I think I got their one of their pastas um, which was also really good. It had good flavor and spiciness and all that. And the third time I got one of their other slices of pizza and that was also just as good. So in general, so far it is actually a good place to go. Um, the alternative pizza place in Ghost Town, um, if you're in um, when you're up near the entrance and you're first heading into um, Ghost Town, it's the area right that's to the right of the entrance to Ghost Rider that also has pizza, which is not bad, but it's kind of more of a generic, like Costco level style of pizza. So if you want some, a quick bite to eat, then that's the place to go. But um, for me, if you want a slightly more a slightly more improved flavor, full experience, and tasty pizza, then or, or pasta for that matter, then Prop Shop Pizzeria is the way to go. Um, if you're in, in um, Ghost Town though, and you want other like meat dishes and things like that, and this is, um, I would recommend Sutter's Barbecue. It's not necessarily on my list just because it's probably one of the few places that I've gone to the least and um, doesn't really make the cut either. And same thing with Wagon Wheel, wagon wheel um, 
pizzeria, I think, or wagon wheel shop, whatever it is, down that street a little bit more. Uh, we never really make it down that far for the food, so it's hard to recommend. But it doesn't mean that they're bad, it's just that um, we don't go there enough to make a recommendation. And I think Wagon Wheel also has uh, a baked potato and things like that. Um, Sutter's Grill also has pretty decent food. I think I've only been there a couple of times, but it's the same thing. It's not. I haven't been there enough to make a recommendation to say that it's good or bad um, quality or consistency or anything like that. Um, now, whether you're going in the morning or need to pick me up in the afternoon, while, so now that we're back in um, the Boardwalk Roaring Twenties area, is if you want to stop for some coffee, then Charleston Circle Coffee is the, the way to go. Um, this, for me, usually has a line, so um, there's not really a good time to go, but if you are waiting for other members of your group to go on a ride, or if you want just a break from sitting or things like that, then definitely get in line when you see that it's relatively short. Um, they brew Starbucks coffee, so you kind of have to be a fan of the flavor of Starbucks coffee, but um, they have a good summarized menu of items, whether it's a latte, cafe americano, uh, various teas and things like that, and then a few pastries here and there, but um, if they are, if there's a festival going on, then they do try, have a themed drink or two, like the boysenberry uh, latte, so for me, I like coffee, so it's on the list. I've been there a few times, and it does, it's really kind of hard to mess it up as far as coffee goes, but um, if you want something like that, then definitely check it out. Um, next up, when you are continuing in the Boardwalk area, um, I am skipping over Johnny Rockets because it's... When I'm in an amusement park, I try to avoid the... Um, obviously name branded places to of places to go so on this list I'm not including Johnny Rockets or Panda Express that's out by the uh, log ride but I am going to recommend um, Coaster's Diner and um, the Boardwalk Barbecue just because of how they're themed uniquely as far as name and menu items and things like that so while they're to me personally they're pretty similar to like a Johnny Rockets um, you do get a unique experience as far as theming as far as a traditional like 50s and 60s America style diner uh, diner and place to eat so I would say think of the uh, diner from Back to the Future where uh, Marty meets the younger version of his dad so that's kind of what you get with Coaster's Diner um, not to say that the food is necessarily great or bad, but it is a notch above what you have in, as far as compared to like the grill in back in the center of Ghost Town next to that pizza place that has the OK Pizza. So um, if you if I was to recommend a place, um, I would prefer Coaster's Diner and Boardwalk Barbecue, but the place in, over in Ghost Town... Um, probably has a quicker um, line to go through. So if you want the same food, but with less of the weight, don't mind waiting outside in line to get the food, then the ghost town version is better. But if you want a place to sit, don't mind the weight a little bit or the line, then Coaster's Diner and Boardwalk Barbecue are the way to go. Now, as far as snacks go, um, I'm a big fan of the churro. So if you tell me, you know, whether we're at, you know, Knott's Berry Farm, um, or Disneyland. I haven't been to Magic Mountain or Universal in a long time, so I can't rec really say if they have churros or how good their churros are, but um, if you tell me that, hey, we're going to Disneyland or not, then I'm going to try and stop for a churro. So the Gour Gourmet Churro Factory um, across the way from the Calico Saloon is the way to go. Again, it's in part of the theme for whatever festival is going on, so but although I think they keep the boysenberry filled churro um, all year round, but you can get just a plain churro or a boysenberry or strawberry filled or I think cream cheese filled churro. They have a churro sundae. Um, right now they have these blueberry sugar topped bayonets, which is basically like these flaky pastry style dishes with some frosting on top. So this time around, I actually swapped the churro requirement for a snack with the bay nets to try it out and I actually really liked it especially if they're nicely warmed and uh, flaky which these were so um, if you have a chance to get them then definitely try them out but as far as default choices go and nothing else um, 
to get or nothing else I want to try, then the churro is the way to go. And the line is actually, for the most part, really quick moving and not very long. So every so often it will, you know, pick up if a lot of people want to get the same thing. Um, but I think I've been lucky, or at least I pay attention to when the lines are pretty short. So it's easy to get in line, get what you want, and leave. Now on the flip side, the ice cream shop that's right next to it, the lines are generally pretty long. Um, you can tell usually by how long the waiting queue is, but for me, there are times when the line has been short and you can get through it pretty quickly, but I think because they're making, you know, ice cream um, sundaes and then ice cream scoops and cones and things like that, the line is, it's really quick for the line to pick up and get really long, but if you're more of an ice cream fan or on like an ice cream sundae or something, then the ice cream shop is the way to go. Uh, for me, it's really more of a benefit in summer. I'm not really much for ice cream in the winter for obvious reasons. But because you're all, if you're spending time in Ghost Town, you're going to walk by this shop um, a number of times. And because it's so close to the saloon, it's next to the Calico Train, the Calico Mine Ride, and the Log Ride, it's really easy to get to various rides where you can enjoy the snack in line and, um, you know, buy the ice cream, get in line for the Log Ride, which when it opens... I assume the wait's generally going to be, you know, 30 minutes or more, so you have plenty of time to enjoy the snack while you're waiting in line. Knock out two things at the same time. Now, the last two entries on my list are kind of generic choices, but because, you know, if you're spending the day at the park, you're going to, you know, get tired and hungry, want something to snack on. I really enjoy, for some reason, the popcorn at Knott's Berry Farm. In general, it's always been... Uh, fresh and fluffy has I haven't really had any burnt popcorn the salt levels are just about right so I usually stop at the one that's by the calico mine ride just because that's in the middle of everything there are a few other stands throughout the park but that one at calico mine ride always seems to be the one that's open too so for me I just want to I, I want a snack I like popcorn the line is actually usually non-existent so I don't know if people just don't get popcorn or because it's so fast and easy to, you know, tr have customer turnover that there's no line. But um, I recommend this shop just because it's easy. It's in the middle of everything. It's just a, not necessarily in the dead center of the park, but because it's, you know, close to a number of rides, just like the ice cream shop, it's easy to, you know, get a snack for a bite to eat as you're walking around, waiting in line. Um, you're maybe sitting in the on the benches nearby just to relax, then that's the way to go. And to round it out, um, I always, I always start, I'm starting to recommend the candy shop that's in the Roaring Twenties area. It's right, it's to the left of the Charleston Circle Coffee. Um, I'm recommending the shop, not uh, part, well, so on the downside it is um, name brand stuff a lot, so a lot of the Jelly Belly stuff, but they, it's basically your traditional candy shop, but in a theme that fits the area, so not to say it's very hard to have gotten that setup done, but in general, because of the vibe is fits very well with the theme of the area, kind of like how Coaster's Diner's Coaster's Diner fits in with the theme of the boardwalk area. The candy shop makes you feel like you're in a old old style candy shop from like the 50s and 60s, so it fits really it fits in really well with the area. The Berry Tales items. Uh, much like how Prop Shop Pizzeria fits in with the area, so that sort of stuff. So I recommend going there. The prices are kind of expensive, so it's like, I think like $4.99 for a quarter pound bag of candy. So it can um, pile up really quick, especially if you start getting into, you know, half a pound or a pound, or if you're buying a lot of candy for a lot of events. But if you are buying it, you know, for a special event, then, you know, a one-off purchase is fine. But that's the other main downside is that it does get pretty pricey, but because you get that um, candy shop, that old school candy shop feel, um, it's just fun to, you know, be like, a, you feel like a kid again when you're in the shop and checking out the candy and the jelly beans and the various stuff that they offer. Um, they do have, um, you know, pre bag candies as well, much like they have in several other shops. So they do make it easy if you want to walk in and walk out. But if you do want to fill your own bag of candy, then the candy shop in the Roaring Twenties area is the way to go. So that's all there is for this particular update and list um, and that sort of stuff. So uh, like I mentioned at the top of the episode, 
Um, Fiesta Village and its offerings are not in this particular review just because it's closed for construction and renovation. Um, but I will catch up on some of the stuff that they have when it reopens to kind of get everything in line with the theme, the theme that they have planned to have that as part of the renovation and all that. And then, of course, places like, you know, Sutter's Grill and Wagon Wheel and all the various places that did not make my list. Like I said, they're not bad places, but I think it's also a very biased way to list for as far as things I like. So I'm not saying that those places are bad or the places I recommend are better. It's just that the places I like have been consistent for me as far as um, look and feel and taste and flavor and offerings and that sort of stuff. So they kind of consistently make the list for every single visit. So um, that's kind of the approach I took with it. But um, the alternatives for most places are equally as good as the places that I like to go to as far as personal preferences. Just for me, these places work, or I've liked these places just a little bit more. Um, the only, the one thing that didn't make my list, of course, was the, the funnel cake places. So there was, there's one by the log ride that's kind of nondescript, and then there's one in the ghost town area. Um, when you're walking down one of the, I think it's one of the, when you're on the street heading to Fireman's Barbecue, um, which is also good. I didn't have a chance to try them out this time around, but funnel cakes are pretty good. Both places are equally good as far as I remember. It's been a while since I've been at either one of them. The main downside there is that both of their lines are usually equally about as long, so it is, um, it can be a wait to get to a funnel cake if you do want it. Um, I am planning on trying it out again um, in one of the visits this year just so I can re-up on my uh, taste of it. Um, I don't remember why I prefer churros over funnel cakes. I don't, mentally, I don't think there's much difference between them aside from Maybe the sugaring, sugar and the preparation of it really, but um, it's probably just the convenience of eating a churro. It's easier to walk and eat a churro than it is the, a funnel cake, but um, I do have plans to try one of them again at either location, but my memory of them is that both of them are equally good. I think they offer basically the same uh, toppings for the funnel cakes and things like that, so um, it didn't, it didn't make my list because they're not good, but just because I didn't have a chance so far to uh, recommend either of them. But usually for us, it comes down to ice cream and churros. Funnel case will happen every so often, but um, kind of like, you know, going to the pizza place in the middle of Ghost Town versus the Prop Shop Pizzeria now. We're, we're going to head to Prop Shop first. If, there, if it's really busy or there's a line or there's an excessive wait, then we'll go to the middle of Ghost Town. But... It's kind of just the pick of one over the other. So that's all there is for this particular episode. So if you have any questions, comment, feedback, or anything like that, um, all the links to the social media sites that I'm on are on the website at headphonesneal.reviews, which also has links to um, subscribe to the show, how to support the show, and all of that good stuff. Um, and of course, if you want to get um, a little bit earlier access to the episode, which is also ad-free, then you can support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash pateln01. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.